I'm not a sociologist, I'm not a historian, I'm not an economist, I'm not a political scientist, but having been a journalist for the best part of 15 years, I think what's fascinating about this is seeing just how quickly it's happened. And a lot of people didn't think it would happen in the West. After World War II, after the horrors of fascism and Nazism, many citizens thought that, okay, we might have problems, but there's absolutely no way that we will ever see the rise of the far right again. That has been disproven. So with the collapse of communism, liberalism again won over this time communism. And the disappearance of the other, an enemy, uh, the search for a new other emerged. Uh, if you remember the Yugoslavian crisis, it was uh, totally ethnic nationalism and uh, ethnic war. The rise of the far-right politics, especially in Europe uh, and in the Western Hemisphere, it has at least two more recent triggers. Uh, one of them, uh, as often talked about, is the rise in socioeconomic inequality. Why is it happening? I would say from my experience speaking to members of the far right, it seems to be a reaction to a world that they can't understand anymore, what it was promised to be. During the 1990s, there was a, a liberal left utopianism. Tony Blair was prime minister of the UK, uh, Bill Clinton, later on, you know, Barack Obama and so on. The Bill Berlin Wall came down. America was championing a left of center liberalism and everybody was going to be on the path towards more and more prosperity, more and more freedoms. The shackles of conservatism were coming off. People had this idea that things would only get better and more liberal and more open. The increasing number of Muslim population uh, in European countries, there was an argument or claim emerged like that this population cannot integrate uh, into the host society. This uh, fear led to the, uh, these immigrants uh, pose a cultural threat to the uh, countries uh, which host this uh, population. And this cultural threat turned into economic threat at the time of economic stagnation or recession. And sometimes they were seen as a burden on the welfare state system of the countries. When the reality of life and the cycle of history hit people, I think, from the people that I've spoken to, they're bewildered. They don't quite understand why their living standards have been depressed. They don't quite understand why they don't have the dream that was promised to them. Therefore, turning to the far right could be a symptom of that. As of um, 2001 and words, uh, especially with the 9-11 terror attacks and the following uh, Al-Qaeda uh, bombings in Madrid and London, uh, this cultural threat and uh, the economic threat perception uh, became the terror threat. And this uh, perception also gained momentum with the Daesh, with the emergence of Daesh and Daesh attacks in the uh, European capitals. So uh, the, all these perce perceptions led to the secretization of the immigration. Parallel to increase in the number of immigrants, uh, also increased the popularity of the uh, far-right parties, uh, which uh, came with the anti-immigrant, xenophobic, Islamophobic uh, agenda. It already started with the uh, end of Cold War period, but at that time it was not so powerful uh, because of the precautions taken by the EU member states. When the York Hyder became the leader of the Austria in 2000s, uh, the Austria uh, faced with the diplomatic sanctions, so he was resigned uh, from the government. I do believe in the American dream. I believe there is such a thing as the American dream. Owning a home is a part of that dream. It just is. Right here in America, if you own your own home, uh, you're realizing the American dream. What I found from people who were uh, ostensibly middle class, when they start losing the holidays every year, when that person starts losing their job, when they have to downgrade their kid going to a nice school to a, maybe now a public school that's not as good, they have to sell their car and start to use public transport. When that happens, people tend to turn toward all right. What is the worst case scenario if, in fact, we were to see prices come down substantially across the country? I guess I don't buy your premise. It's a pretty unlikely possibility. We've never had a decline in house prices on a nationwide, nationwide basis. We shouldn't be so um, functionalist about this in the sense that rising socioeconomic inequality doesn't automatically lead to scapegoating of, let's say, ethnic and religious others. It could have been 
class enemies, it could have been ideological enemies, it could have led to some sort of self-critical introspection. So it doesn't necessarily uh, lead to uh, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and these, uh, these kinds of uh, ethno-religious bigotry. But it does, and it did, unfortunately, uh, in the case of much of Western and Eastern Europe, and even North America, in part because uh, these regions, especially uh, West Central Europe, did not have sizable non-Christian minorities for decades, if not for centuries. So all of a sudden, you have uh, this uh, tiny corner of the world, Western Europe, which achieved an unprecedented level of religious sectarian uh, and social homogeneity, going around, capturing and shaping the rest of the world in its own image. When we see far-right mass killers, Andres Bering Breivik in Norway, Brandon Tarrant, as far afield as New Zealand, Australia. The synagogue shooters in Pittsburgh and California, they can refer to a historical legacy, a historical tradition. That is the distinctive uh, historical legacy of uh, Western and specifically Catholic Christendom. There's definitely a rebellion against an uncertain, unsettled world, and it's globalized. Whenever they've actually spoken of this threat, of others who they blame for their circumstances and who their far-right leaders blame for their circumstances. It was always the case that they never actually met one of them. We are living in a world of a reverse of a democratization process, a emergence of illiberal democracies. So it's also make it a little bit difficult for the countries in the region to fight against this kind of far-right political parties and their agendas. Our country is going to start building and making things again. America first.